Should you invest your HSA for the long term? More and more people are doing this. Does it make sense for you? I've got that more coming up. My name is Mike Bernard. I'm the host of the Wise Money Show. I'm also one of the certified financial planners right here at Corhorn Financial Group. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, and smash that thumbs up button. The HSA Health Savings Account you are eligible to contribute to if you have a qualifying high deductible health plan. And it offers the trifecta of tax benefits that unlike anything else out there, any other uh, is different than an IRA, different than a 401k, different than a Roth. It's very, very unique. But the thinking is, well, it's a health savings account. You save up, and then as you have out-of-pocket medical expenses, because again, you've got this high deductible health insurance, you will have more out-of-pocket expenses. Well, you just use that money, and it's a tax-sheltered, tax-beneficial way of doing it. Well, thanks to the unique structure of the tax code and how HSAs uh, are actually structured, some of those rules, you might want to rethink your HSA as being part of your overall investment portfolio, saving up for the long term and possibly investing it. All right, to level the playing field, again, you're allowed to open an HSA and fund an HSA if you have an HSA qualifying uh, high deductible health insurance. And if you do, you can open this health savings account either at the bank or at an investment company, Fidelity, that sort of thing. When you make a contribution, your contribution is up to a certain annual limit, whether you're an individual, it's individual coverage or family coverage. Your contribution's pre-tax. If you make a contribution directly out of your paycheck, then it saves you federal state taxes and also FICA taxes. If you make a contribution right out of your pocket, it saves you federal and state taxes by being a deduction on the front page of your, of your tax return. All of the investment, either interest, or if you do invest it, the capital gains, the growth, the dividends, all that's sheltered. And then when you withdraw the money, and here's the kicker, withdraw it to pay for qualifying medical expenses or to reimburse yourself for qualified medical expenses that you've incurred ever since you had that high deductible health plan, then those dollars come out tax-free. So pre-tax in, tax sheltered uh, within it, and then tax-free on the way out, unlike anything else out there. And once again, the contributions to the health savings account, this is not use it or lose it. This is your money. This is, this is your money, your savings account. It's not like the flexible spending account or FSA where most of it is use it or lose it. HSA, you can contribute up to that limit and not be penalized, not be worried, not be afraid of losing this money if you don't use it within that first year or within a certain time period. So the question is, do you contribute to your HSA and let it sit in a savings account, hopefully earning a little bit of interest right now, but, but not much, or do you actually invest it for the long term? When it fits, I love the idea of investing the HSA for the long term. That's what I do with mine. We recommend it for lots of clients, again, if the situation fits. What do you need to make sure is in place before you decide to invest your HSA? First, if you're going to invest your HSA, that means you're now treating these dollars as long-term money. It's long-term dollars now, and you need to have a strategy, a plan for how you deal with short-term medical expenses when they come up. If you take your HSA and invest it, even, even in a diversified portfolio, but then you have a medical expense, a medical bill that comes up in the short term, and it just so happens to be the stock market's down at that time or something like that, you don't wanna, be, you wanna, you don't wanna put yourself in a position where you're gonna need to sell the investments at a low point, right? Because you'll have to sell more shares when their price is down in order to get the resources needed to pay that short-term medical bill. So investing your HSA means those are now long-term dollars. It's not a short-term gamble. Well, I'm gonna invest it here in, in April and when I have an expense that comes up in June, hopefully the market's gone up in two months. Now, the market is a long-term investment. Okay, 50% of, of each day, the stock market's either positive or negative, but 75% of every 10 years, the stock market's positive. Therefore, what's your plan to cover short-term medical expenses as they come up? 
outside of your HSA with other resources. To us, that's where the three bank account system really pays off. That second bank account is a, is a spot where you're saving up for known upcoming expenses. Therefore, if you're contributing to your HSA and investing it, I would open up another savings account or have part of your checking or part of your savings just sort of earmarked for, well, we've got some money saved up that when we you know, need to go to the doctor or if one of the kids breaks their arm or a medical expense comes up, we can handle that within this savings account right here. We've got money saved up to, to, to manage that, to handle that and cover that expense so that we don't need to touch our HSA that's now invested for the long term. Second thing you then need to do in order to invest your HSA is then develop a prudent investment strategy. And, and obviously this is always the case, but with an HSA, when you know that, you know what, I, I, could, actually, I could actually use this money in the, you know, if for medical expenses, I've just seen it. it. It just feels different when that investment goes down because the thought is, well, oh, had I just taken that money out and paid for the prescriptions, I wouldn't have lost money. And therefore, having a prudent investment strategy that's consistent for your risk tolerance, and it's one that you'll stick to for the long term, that's just critically important. I think it feels a little bit different when it's your 401k or your IRA or your Roth, where you're like, I'm not gonna touch this until retirement. Even if you're saying, yep, my HSA, I'm investing it, it's now a long-term investment and it's, it's something I won't touch until retirement. The fact that you can touch it, I think it, it, it requires even more discipline to a prudent investment strategy. So step number two to invest your HSA is make sure you come up with that prudent investment strategy, a disciplined, long-term investing approach that you'll stick to working with your CFP. And then the third thing that you need to do if you're going to invest your HSA, again, you're now treating your HSA as long-term dollars. This isn't a, a bet that, well, I just don't think I'll use the money. I, I don't think I'll get sick. Uh, if I do, I'll, I'll touch it. No, 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 this is, I'm investing the dollars for the long term. I built a plan to cover short-term medical expenses if they do come up. So step number three is you then need a system to track those expenses or capture those receipts for medical expenses that you pay out of pocket. Why is that important? because you've invested your HSA and you're gonna let that grow for the future, you can then shoebox, something that we, we've called here, other, people's, uh, other people have said that too, shoebox your receipts so then as you pay for medical expenses out of pocket, you let your HSA continue to, to grow, go up and down, but long-term grow for your, for your financial future. And then out there in the future, you can then reimburse yourself from your HSA for all of those out-of-pocket medical expenses that you incurred while you had the, the, the high deductible health plan and thereafter. So right now, for me, we've been doing this strategy for several years now. I've got a, an electronic folder where I've got all of my 2019 receipts, my 2020 receipts, my 2021 receipts. And who actually has these receipts like it's a restaurant? No, no, no. These are, I'm, I've paid it online and I've captured a screenshot of the confirmation or I've saved a PDF of the confirmation. And I save all of that in those folders and then I track, here's how much we spent out of pocket um, those years for, for medical expenses. And that way I'm keeping a tally of, or keeping a tab of what I'll be in the future, be able to withdraw from my HSA tax-free. Why is that important? Well, if I've invested it, this hopefully this HSA is growing for me. There's, there's tax-free growth and out there in the future, I'll be able to reimburse myself from a larger nest egg, a larger chunk of money, and I'll be able to withdraw a large chunk of that tax-free. So investing your HSA, brilliant idea, works and makes sense for a lot of folks. Number one, you need to figure out a plan to cover those medical expenses out of pocket. Number two, come up with and stick to a prudent long-term investment strategy. And then three, find a system for, for, for tracking and monitoring your receipts so you can in the future reimburse yourself. Work with your certified financial planner on whether you should do it, all of those steps and more. If you don't have a CFP on your team, you can contact one on my team. Find us online, cohorn.com. That's Corhorn with KWiseMoneyShow.com. You can find us there as well, or give us a call, 574-247-5898. All right, there you have it. Go ahead and take your next wise step in your financial life.